Good evening. I'm Pastor Matt McEwen from UBIC Holly Hill, and I want to welcome you to tonight's praise service. We're so glad that you're with us. If you're watching live, hit that share button now and also start a watch party so as many people as possible can be a part of this service. This has been a real joy for us since March 26th to do these Wednesday night praise and worship services. It's not something that we had been doing. It was really in response to this COVID-19 pandemic. And now that some of these restrictions are becoming more rolled back, we'll see what the future holds for this particular service because usually it's our youth group that is meeting in the sanctuary on Wednesday nights. But however long this lasts, it has been a joy for us and we've really enjoyed being with you. If you know someone who is coming to the parking lot tonight, well, and I guess if you're watching this, if you were coming, I guess you're probably already in the parking lot. So if you're in the parking lot, I'm talking to you right now. This is the first service where we are testing out our new FM transmitter. If you will go to the FM uh, radio in your vehicle and go to 87.9, now you can't use your seek function because that will look for a station that actually exists. What we had to do is to find a frequency that's only static and then we'll start broadcasting from there. It will be our hope and our new tradition to broadcast to this FM band uh, maybe 15 minutes or so before each service. We will do this on Sunday as well. So if you're out in the parking lot, we want to say hi to you and welcome. If you're watching via live stream, thank you for being here. If you are watching archived, we know that this is going to be a blessing for you too, even though you're not watching it live with us. So hello to everyone. Um, and I want to thank someone, you know who you are, but someone who watches us from a whole other state they don't even live in Florida. They have been watching our services and I guess we're blessed by them and they sent us a check for $400. That is absolutely amazing. Obviously during this time, our giving has been a little bit down because not everyone is tech savvy. Some people have been mailing in uh, offering checks and that is great. But for us to be blessed by someone who isn't even a part of our church, was it was stunning to me. So thank you so very much. You know who you are. As we get into tonight's service, we're going to talk about opening up a little bit because tonight we're talking about wandering through the wilderness. And that's kind of been what has been going on with us. We've been in a temporary situation, just like the children of Israel were living in temporary homes for 40 years in the wilderness. So as we get into this, it's sort of like the beginning of this pandemic. We didn't really know how to do it until we did it. So the same is true for opening back up. We're going to see how it goes and we'll give you some more information during the lesson time. Thank you once again for joining us. We're gonna go now into the sanctuary where Alex and the band are ready to lead you in worship, but let me lead you in a prayer before we go there. Lord, thank you for the wonderful technology that we have that helps us get the gospel out to thousands and thousands of people. Lord, we thank you for the financial support that people have been giving us and for the encouragement that people have been saying how blessed they are from, uh, from, for us doing these services. Thank you, Lord, for this added dimension of being able to do this FM transmitting. We thank you for that. And we pray that you would bless everyone that is watching, whether they are online, whether they are in their cars in our parking lot, or whether they are watching archived. Bless them through this service. B'Shem Yeshua, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go now to the sanctuary and let's worship like people who are excited to soon be back in these doors. Let's go there now.
Lord, we know that you're going to pull us through this time right now. You know that you are doing such a good thing in all of our lives. We can see it. We can see that, God, you are working all around the world, in other countries. You are curing people. You are stopping this thing. And Lord, your will is being done. Lord, we just thank you for what you are doing in this church. How you have allowed us to continue on these live streams. We just praise you today and we just lift up our voices. Let's just all sing out wherever you are, as loud as you can. Sing through the struggle.
call me from the grave by name You call me out of all my shame I see the old has passed away The new has come Now I resurrect
Thank you once again for joining us. I'm Pastor Matt, and let's get into our message tonight. But uh, let me just talk to you. Let's be a little bit more informal because I want to explain to you how we're going to open things back up and when. It's going to be a bit of a process, and we're going to ask you to be patient with us because it's going to be something that happens probably in stages and in phases. So we're just going to roll with it. You, as our church family, have been so amazingly flexible throughout all of this, and we we really appreciate it. Uh, our leadership met this week, uh, a few nights ago, on, on Monday night, actually, our church board met, and we have decided to do a bit of a soft opening coming up on the 24th of this month, Sunday the 24th. Here's what that will look like. Due to the size of our sanctuary and due to the fact that we're going to keep up with the social distancing guidelines that have been set down for us, we believe that we can fit about 60 people safely in our sanctuary, allowing for distance between one another, between family groups. So uh, what we're going to do on the 24th, we're going to allow people that want to, to come into the building but the only parts of the church campus that we're going to be using is the sanctuary and the lobby, and that's it. And we're going to really insist that we show love for one another by keeping six feet apart. We're still not going to be getting close to one another or greeting one another by touching, no handshaking, no hugging, no anything like that. We're, we're just going to try to continue to be responsible. But there are those of you that are really longing to be back in the building. You're just really a little stir crazy and you want to get back into fellowship with people. And so that's why we're doing this. So on the 24th for Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And for now, we're only going to do the one service at 9 a.m. on Sundays. So you're more than welcome to join us, but we have to cap it at 60 people. Here's how it'll work. If you come to that service, that 9 a.m. service on the 24th, when you come into the lobby, we will have people that will act as ushers that will actually show you where to sit because we're going to have to provide some distance. Family groups that live in the same home are more than welcome to sit together. 
So let's say there is a row of 10 chairs. If there are five in your family, you can come and sit there, but we may put a few chairs, two or three chairs in between you, uh, probably three in between you and the next party. And so we will have these ushers seat you and say, just like at a restaurant, you, oh, you're a party of one, you're a party of two, you're a party of five. Okay, here's where we will have you sit. And we'll, we'll try to keep that safe distance from one another. The other thing is because we're only going to use the lobby and the sanctuary, especially while our school teachers are in session doing remote learning, uh, we don't want to take the risk of us maybe carrying the virus and being asymptomatic. We want to make sure that we keep our teachers healthy. We need them. And so we won't be going down any of the hallways. Uh, so because of that, unfortunately, at least for now, we're not going to be able to offer services for our children. This means for now, no Papa's house, no nursery, no little lambs, no things like that. Uh, everyone that comes to the church will have to be in the sanctuary. So here's how I'd like to see it go. I don't want you at all to feel guilty or shamed or feel badly if you just are not ready to come back yet on the 24th. There are many of our number that either are recovering from a cancer or uh, have an immunodeficiency of some kind, or maybe you're in the, the, an age group that you would be high risk. I mean, my goodness, I'm, I'm a middle-aged person, but I'm high risk due to the fact that I weigh more than I should and I'm diabetic and have high blood pressure. So there may be people that are a little nervous about coming back so soon. And if you are, I don't want you to feel badly about that because we've made such an effort during this pandemic to do the streaming and these different options, you are totally fine to stay at home and no one's going to make you feel bad about not coming into the church building. That's totally fine. So that's one option. If you're saying, oh, Pastor Man, I just don't think I'm ready yet on the 24th, that's okay. Watch the stream as you have been doing and it'll be fine. Now, some of you will want to be here on campus and we'll want to, you know, wave to someone or greet one another before and after the service, but you might not want to leave your vehicle. You might want to come and be a part of our parking lot community, do kind of drive-in church, roll your window down and talk to someone or wave to them or whatever. You might want to do that, but not come into the building yet. You might just not feel quite safe about doing that. That's fine too. I firmly believe that we'll probably have three groups of people attending our church. A group that's at home watching on the stream, a group that's in the parking lot listen, listening on their radios, or watching the stream on their phones or tablets in the parking lot and just coming so they can greet one another. And there'll be a small number of people that probably come to the actual service and are in the sanctuary. So just again to run everything down as far as the restrictions that we'll have to put in place, number one, we'll only be in the lobby in the sanctuary. We won't be having any children's things. And the last thing, which is I know disappointing for everyone because we <laughs> designed coffee cups this year and uh, travel coffee cups that you're supposed to bring for our coffee station. We're not gonna do any kind of coffee or continental breakfast, snacks, anything like that, at least for the foreseeable future until we know we're in the clear. We don't wanna do anything which causes people to either congregate or people to be touching things where maybe someone might be nervous about germs or, or um, something being disinfected or something like that. So it's going to be kind of bare bones. I'm just going to be straight with you. It's going to be, you know, not quite as fun yet. But for those of you that really want to be here in the building, I think it'll fill your tank uh, as far as that, that need. And so we want to offer that to you. Uh, what's also exciting is we have decided, since we have a lot of these mugs, at least for now, we're not going to sell them. We'd like to give you one for free and then have you bring your own coffee to church. That way we don't have to have our coffee station. No one is you know, doing these kinds of things or handling different items. We will give you on that first Sunday a free Proclaim coffee mug, travel mug, and you can just bring your own coffee if you're one of those that, that comes to the service. So what will we do if more than 60 people show up? 
Well, that is a great idea. I mean, that's a great question. And maybe I have a great idea for you. I don't know. Let's, let's go with me for a second. We might be like an airline and ask if we have more people than we, you know, can seat. We might say, is anyone willing to listen from their car? Is anyone willing to watch the stream from their vehicle? Or there may be some of you, in fact, someone actually has already contacted me and said, you know what, when we're ready to reopen, I think I will step back and when we can really get back to normal, let me know, but I want to allow my seat to be given to someone who just really needs to be there. I'm okay watching at home. What a loving attitude that is. That's absolutely awesome. We want you to be here if you want to be here, but we're going to abide by these guidelines. Now, where have we been? I mean, I can't just only give you that. I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm a teacher by nature and I can't just spend all my time tonight talking about guidelines and opening up and all that good stuff. So, um, let me just give you a little tidbit for tonight. Where we have been is the word stages. S-T-A-G-E-S, -E starting, treaties and tribes, advancement, glory, erosion, servitude. Now, where we have been is the starting and the treaties and tribes. Now we're in the period of advancement. Last Sunday, this past Sunday, we talked about exiting Egypt. And tonight, I just briefly want to tell you about the wilderness wanderings. You see, the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And I told you on Sunday, if you were watching then, the trip from, the land of, uh, from Egypt to the land of Canaan, which later was called Israel, takes 11 days on foot. But it took the children of Israel 40 years. And it was because they were being punished. I told you, God kind of put them in a timeout because they didn't believe his word on being able to go in and take the land. They were, they were too scared. Well, to go along with that, I just want to give you a little bit of, well, something interesting. You see, in the time of them actually exiting Egypt and them going to Mount Sinai, which we are commemorating by a holiday called Pentecost. It's coming up in just a couple of weeks. Pentecost, Pentecost means 50th day. And that is the 50th day since, um, since the, the, the couple of days after Passover. So Jesus dies on uh, Passover, and then there is a, a Sabbath, a holy day. After that, you start counting seven sets of seven, well, seven sets of seven days, seven weeks. And you count up that obviously equals 49. And then on the 50th day, there's a special celebration called Shavuot, which means weeks, or how we say it from the Greek into English is Pentecost. Now, the time from them exiting Egypt and getting to Mount Sinai, where God speaks the commandments to them, what's very interesting is that period is known, at least by our Jewish friends, as the betrothal. The betrothal. Isn't that interesting? They look at the commandments that God gave Israel as the marriage contract. God was the groom and Israel was the bride. And I want to give you something very interesting because it says they heard God speak and it says in your English Bible, they heard him speak and they were at the base of the mountain. The base of the mountain. Well, what's so interesting is in Hebrew, it says they were under the mountain. Well, I don't know about you, but I, I don't think it's possible to go under a mountain unless there's a cave or something like that or a tunnel. Why does the Bible say in Hebrew they were under the mountain? Well, some scholars have said that there was a rocky outcropping that went out from Mount Sinai that they took shade under and were hearing this uh, under this outcropping. Well, do you know how a Jewish wedding works? Have you ever seen one on TV or in a movie? You are under a canopy. The Hebrew is known as a chuppah. You're under this while you say your vows and, and do those things that happen at a wedding. So it's interesting. They have this betrothal period, if you will. And the reason is God didn't want the people out of gratitude for being set free from slavery. He didn't want them to feel pressured into saying yes to making a covenant with him. He knew that just out of joy, they would say yes to anything when they first were released. And so he allowed them to have several weeks to think it over. 
And then he gave his part of the marriage contract. He said what he would do, and he asked the people, well, you know, do you agree to this? And they said, we will do and we will hear. We will do. It's almost like saying, I do. It, it's, it's wonderful. And it very well may be that they were actually under a canopy of the mountain. What a perfect picture of a wedding. All throughout the New Testament, we are known as the bride. The bride. And our Lord is known as the bridegroom. It's so interesting to me that this marital language, it makes not only so much sense, but it makes a really touching object lesson for us as well. How do you prepare for a wedding? Are you married? Have you been married in the past? How did you prepare for your wedding? That's how we need to be acting right now as we come up to this anniversary of Pentecost. Because Pentecost isn't just an echo back to Acts chapter 2. It's an echo all the way back to Mount Sinai, the very first Pentecost. So this is a really interesting time, in my opinion, that might even have a correlation in your heart to Christian traditions like Lent, for instance, when you go through a period of time of preparation leading up to something. We need to be looking at the day of Pentecost as almost like our wedding day with God, where we commit to Him, where we make a lasting covenant with Him. There may be some of you watching that You've heard me talk about this, a relationship with God, and now I'm comparing it to a marriage. And there may be some of you that are thinking, well, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about having a relationship with God. Well, listen, God gives you time enough to, to think about it. But I will say, there is a time when that time runs out. God forbid, if anything should happen to us before we make that decision, it's, it's too late. So we need to be preparing our hearts for that day. And what if we did this? What if the day of Pentecost for us as believers, what if that was almost like a, a renewing of the vows, so to speak? What if it was almost like a celebration of your relationship with God, a celebration of your salvation experience, that no matter where it was in the year, you know, Christians talk about their spiritual birthday when they said yes to follow God. Well, what if you sort of celebrated like an anniversary of being together with your Heavenly Father on that day? I think it's a great idea. As we sing this final song, I want you to think of if you have a new relationship with God or if you've been walking with the Lord for decades, I want you to think just like a husband and wife can think back and, you know, how did we meet? What's our story? How, how did that all come together? I want you to meditate on that as we sing this last song.